of non-doing. Mm-hmm. You know? non-doing, non-doing does not mean absence of activity. Uh, non-being is the action without the doer. Mm. You know? And don't teach it like too much like that in philosophy, but, uh, mm. but more like from the place of observing, like things are happening of their own, in their, within their own laws and their own mm. Nature, and, and um, it is here also within us. Mm. If we just be, you know, just be as quiet as possible, you know, uh, without raising thought. You know? mm. So even if thought come, you're simply aware of it, but you don't try to manipulate or to control it. No? But just stay as the space and that uh, that sees it. You know. From mm. And then, like we were talking this morning with uh, Krishna, we were saying you know, that 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 knowing, which is not linked to concepts uh, or to the external world, anything phenomenal, that that if as you withdraw from that field of knowing, doing, and knowledge. Let go of them. You come. It subsides naturally into a deeper knowing, which is non-conceptual. It is the space in which there is perceiving, but not intentional. Just perceiving, and the awareness of perceiving, and that is uh, synonymous with the self. That's that's our that's our place. And um, in these simple pointers, depending upon how open. One is, and uh, responsive to that kind of guidance, because sometimes you feel even the resistance in the mind. You can still say to them, even the resistance also is not your. T- you're not doing it. You know, uh, our conditioning is behaving like that, and there's something, another power apart from the conditioning, that is aware of the conditioning. You know, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to develop that. You just have to be aware of it. Then you say yes, yes, it's right here, it's right here, it's right here. And then you see, then they can admit and observe that uh, the energies of the everything else is just what's happening in your head. You know, everything else is just your world is in your head. You know, the world is not an objective field that you observe. Actually, the world is sort of uh, the stuff in your head. Is what the, the, the herbs and spices of our projections and that we project that onto the the basic elemental world and flavor it according to your conditioning and desire, and then you know assume that that world is real. So that's why I say there's only one Earth, but there are billions of worlds because in each one, what I mean by world is the, the unique way in which you perceive things, like we are sitting in this. Place we can say this in this field of so many different things, trees and hills and sky and people and earth and everything like that. But the inner response to them might be different. Conditioning may, personal conditioning may uh, tend to, because of its own style of the way it works, be drawn to certain kind of things, or, and that becomes you know that's that's your experience today. It might be very different from someone else. Sitting right next to them, and uh, so the point of that is that the world is not something that we all agree upon. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, that tree is there. Yes, this tree is there. Whatever. But is the emotional content, the way that we respond to them, that shapes your your take on the world? Nobody has captured the world. You know, you you only can project and imagine something over it. What we call a world. So, earth and world is a different thing for me. Earth is one thing. World is more of a, a 
psychological, emotional, personal play. You know? And this is why the emphasis is only to, um, to become completely naked, empty of, uh, of conceptual attachments to anything. It's there, like that. Everything is there. That is the treasure, and that is you. You are your treasure, and the discovering of your treasure. And uh, like that. Everything comes from there. Everything is there. Actually, the, the, the natural life that belongs to this expression is here, but we are often not aware of it. So we are living the projected life that comes through the mind and through conditioning, what we think is good for the us that we think we are, or the I that I think I am. But gradually, just to your satsang, satsang is working on everybody all the time. You will have to keep on being grateful for it and and you know opening to it and so on. Because the work, even though you even yourself are not doing the work, it's it's happening automatically. We are in this satsang energy pool. It's like just like we say the. Everything is growing, and when it stops growing and it's dead, it keeps changing. <laughs> so, like the trees, they are always growing. The air is always moving. The consciousness is always expanding, always ripening. But when you are conscious of it, it ripens quicker. When you are conscious of it, you you cooperate with it. Let's say like that, because these words are still sort of like a kindergarten to us. But we, 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 when we continue to, to welcome it and to be, you know, to love it and appreciate and respect it, then somehow the integration happens. When we, when we move beyond knowing something, mm. to, to, to being what we say we know. From knowing to, to being, and say, yeah, I know, I know, I am the self. Is that that's not the self saying. You know, the, the knowing of the self and being self is the same. Should be the same, the same. And then even the, the claim of that thing is it, it's not necessary. It's easier to say yes, I, I know this, and I I, I I know I am the awareness. And who is saying I know I am the awareness? Is it the awareness saying I know I am the awareness? What does awareness have to say about awareness? So that's the subtlety. This is the subtlety, where the, the the final resistance that's left in human being is burnt there at the altar of this place, from the knowing to being. And being is not something you can do. Just when you see that even the knowing, I know this, I know I am this, is also perceived. And nothing is kept. Nothing is kept. As a reference, some tangible reference for yourself, and then you see that you know. But wait a second. Some way, whatever I am is totally here. It's totally here. Before the birth of concepts or of feeling, everything that can be perceived is only arising in it. Is the is its temporary aspects. And this kind of <laughs> natural meditation, simple meditation, remembering. Is remembering. Is uh, becomes most natural. You don't have to learn so much. One time I was looking at one, even a, a Sufi saint was talking about the different things. And sometimes it's okay to hear the different subtle layers of the construction of the universe and of the 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 subtle plays and how how the body came into being and how how the the the, the quintessence of the of the elements were first arriving there. And then after that, somehow, the the spirit comes there, and then the soul finally is pushed into it, and then the, the thing begins to take. On. We can learn a little bit about it, but you don't have to learn so much about that. The true self awareness is it doesn't have to go through that. Otherwise, you start to learn the mind. Ah, yeah. yeah. So this is what happened, and so on, so on, so on, so on. So. But I'm talking about neat and direct. You know, that all of that. All of what's happening in the mind, even auspiciously, is phenomenal mm-hmm. to that which allows seeing to be recognized. Also, stay with that.
It's not that we're trying to come to a place where we are there but not doing. It's not a. It's neither doing nor non-doing. It's beyond that. Because non-doing implies a non-doer. You see. So beyond this thing, and not beyond spatially, but subtly. Then you see that because what the people are afraid of, the ego mind is afraid of, is to have activities removed from you. But the activities are pure. It's only the activities that are driven by egoic identity that is impure. And you know, you know, you cannot stop activity. The cosmos create activity. The life force can manifest activity. Activity is not ego. You see, that's the mistake we make. Is that somehow. You know, but if I come to that place, you know, I, 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 I have to non do it, and what I sit on the shelf like some stone Buddha or something, you mistake completely. Then you're in the you're in the cosmic activity. You can perceive, but without confusion, in a in a unitive perceiving, not uh, the way the ego wants ownership and you know praise and blame and not without that. Can you imagine? Can you feel without it? Every time we come back to that place before concepts, you find it's already here. Before you came back to it, it's already here. When we come back to you, your whatever came back to it, it's already there. And that which is already there, that's the one who is here, and that's what you are. And that has no, that has no um, conflict with activity. Activity is very necessary for it in its manifestation. But its activity perceived from the purest uh, unity. Whatever it takes, you have it in abundance. You have to make use of it, because it's not like you know. I mean, how much we have learned in the world, and how much strenuous um, energy, and to learn things which you cannot even keep. To learn things, which they just, you know, memory will take it away, because memory also is necessary for learning, and it is not stable. It's also function. Memory also get old and tired. So, what is the thing that even memory can, even if memory goes, you cannot destroy it? Isn't it? Everything else, every other function, the intellect. The memory, the body, everything else is somehow will go. The body will also go. What is the thing that won't go? It will watch even memory going. Something here is watching memory going. So that is the thing. Simple when our our pointers have become so simple. I say no. Don't don't try to learn too many things because you're going to forget them anyway. Mm-hmm. Find the thing that is before remembering and forgetting. Then remembering and forgetting also their traffic. You know, where is that? Where has that ever gone? Where does it ever come from? You know. And so the so the focus is simple. Nevertheless, the momentum, the force of habits from the mind. Don't just walk away. They're gonna keep coming, and it's good that they come, because if they don't come, you might feel like, well, I've transcended and everything. So when they come, they show you, whoa, we still have some, you know, some work. And what is the work? Actually, is just to keep looking and see that that uh, that was seen to come, and to acknowledge, register, confirm, and render your seeing that. Uh, but it's just this somehow. We have to meditate on it, to stay, to stay with it until the efforts to stay also go. Uh, to stay, meaning that you can leave. You have to be in that place that has no counterpart. You, know? you can come or you can go. You can, you know, before all of these. And where is that? And when is it? It's always been. When doesn't matter to it. It's before every when. You know, and every place, everywhere, it's already here. It is. And then what to do? Who has been asked the question, it or something else? You say, what to do? What, to whom is the question addressed? To that which is, 
or to that which wants to be it. And the want to be it is already watched from it. So this subtle, this that's why I said to you one time, your meditation become like this. You can't do it just like this. It's only on this point, if you manage to come to this place, to the quintessence of seeing. Only this thing, you know. Yeah, it's this urge here. But I still am not there yet. And I say, but who said this thing? What can this voice be apart from an appearance only? And if it has belief in it, then the belief will give a kind of solidity and a kind of you see like this. That that being seen, stay being seen, stay with it, you know. And if you put in even ten minutes of looking like that, you know, it is washing out everything, washing out. You know. Every other knowledge, when I say we go beyond knowledge, you know you're saying our oh, knowledge is rubbish. No, you be going beyond the need for knowledge, which is the self. Self doesn't need knowledge. Self doesn't need knowledge. Then and that being established that that is the truth experientially, then you can be with knowledge. Mm. The knowledge is, is the right you have the right relationship with knowledge. Mm. You have the right relationship with activities because you're flowing in cosmic activities. How often we hear each other say, I was just thinking of you, or you know, I was coming to see you, and you. Well, why is this? Because not uh, even in the world generally it happens like that. But people don't recognize that this was not a product of their ego. This was just somehow coming in attunement with the cosmic rhythm. And it's only because of this and recognizing this that I say to you, you know, the life takes care of life, mm. not the ego. If you go with the ego mind and say, Yeah, I'm going to do this, and then tomorrow I'm going to do that, and so who speaks like God? God doesn't speak like that. <laughs> you know? So, something just when you're at, all you have to be is somehow be attuned with your own self, your own source. No? And then you see the way. Everything is still, can still be whatever everything is, but uh, it's, not, uh, you know, it's not some real estate for you. It's not some. Treasure you put in a bank for you. It's something is very, just it's different. Even if you have billions in a bank, and even if you have one hundred thousand cars and ten palaces, you can still be free if you're not attached to them. If you don't think that, you know, like we have an old saying, "Man can make money, but money cannot make man." No, if you understand that, uh, you know, yeah, all these things can be there. There is a story that from the ancient time, from the story of Solomon, and he said that Solomon um, was a you know a king, and uh, his son of David, the son of son of King David, Solomon was. Uh, he said that uh, God loved Solomon in the biblical language. That God loved Solomon, and uh, um, because yeah, God loved Solomon. And appeared in a dream to Solomon, and said to Solomon, Solomon, ask from me whatever your heart wants, and I'll give it to you. And Solomon reflected for a moment. He says, Of all the things I can ask for, he says, Lord, just give me wisdom to guide these people wisely. Give me wisdom from you. And he says, God was so pleased with Solomon. He said, Solomon, I am deeply pleased with you, because of all the things you could have chosen, riches you could have chosen, so many things, you chose wisdom so that you something for your people, so you can guide the people wisely. So because you didn't choose other things, perishable things, I'm going to give them to you as well. You can have, you, I'm going to make you the wisest man in the world, no, wiser than Saint Francis and all this kind of, no? the wisest person in the world. But also, I'm going to make you the richest, also, because you didn't ask for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, many times later, no? Jesus also said, when people were talking, oh, but you know what are we going to do? He says, don't worry about what you will eat or what you have to wear. You know, look at the flowers in the field. You know, which. Um, so simple, not even anybody plant them there. No? 
Look how beautiful they are. Not even Solomon, Jesus said, not even Solomon in all of his kingly splendor was dressed as perfectly as a flower, which is here only for a day and is gone the next day. And if God makes these things, look at the birds, he said, they don't have bank accounts, they don't save up and you know, look how much they are cared for. So how much more would the power of God care for you? You see? But he say, seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And all these things will come to you. But does some people feel like, oh I see them so I can get all these things? I said, No, that's not the point. He said what you need will come to you in even abundance. But don't seek those things. Seek first the kingdom of God. Then at another place he's saying, when asked, but where is this kingdom of God? He said, It is within you. What kind of kingdom can be within you? It cannot be a kingdom, you know, you cannot even fit a spoon inside your body. What kind of kingdom? Kingdom is palaces as though no, no, not different kind of kingdom. Greater than all the kingdoms of the world is inside us. He's saying like that, no? And you know it also, you see it, no? Not, not, you don't know the teaching, the teaching don't know, but you know what I'm saying when I say the kingdom of heaven. What is this thing here? The kingdom of heaven is a place of peace and total silence and a sense of completeness and the joy natural and intuitive knowing that this is everlasting. This itself is beyond time. That is referred to as kingdom. But if the kingdom of God is within you, who are you? Mm-hmm. Understand? Mm-hmm. For whom is kingdom then? <laughs> Why you need kingdom? Even so, look what these reflections. When you reflect upon them, look what happened to you. Right now, right here. What has to be here uh, for you to perceive kingdoms? Consciousness has to be there. And even you know you are conscious right now. So consciousness is the wish fulfilling tree. No, what is aware even of consciousness also? Do we have to go to books for these answers? Mm-hmm. So these type of contemplations, we talk about them. What is it saying? What is it saying? That's why I say it's not even a book. It's like a mirror. I'm putting a mirror in front. God's mirror is put. Yeah. Book you have to learn, but the mirror of God shows you what you see. Who is going to be seen in this mirror? When God is formless, who is going to be seen? What is the purpose of this mirror? This mirror is satsang, actually. The mirror is satsang. Uh, who is in this mirror? You. You are there, but not, not the flesh and blood one. Silence is heard also. And emptiness is also perceived. So all these satsang has just been preparing you just to accept yourself. <laughs> if you can say that. And I'm so happy to say it is not about, you know, destroying activity. God doesn't see he create the activity. How can he be against activity? Nothing to do with anything about activity. The truth is not in conflict with any activity. It's con- you know, somehow, but the activity born from delusion, from a deluded mind, this activity mm-hmm. is said sinful, meaning that it will not bring you joy. Mm-hmm. But it gives you choice. And this life is about it, the play of choice, mm-hmm. which itself is illusory. When we listen to things like that, what you should do? You should go find a place by yourself, sit down by yourself for a little bit, and just to confirm yourself. That's what we should do. Don't run down to the kitchen and you know run down to. Just go sit by yourself for ten minutes or five minutes, and just to see what is to be done and by who. 
what is here? What is, what is here that's me? What is me? What does the term I refer to? Is it something tangible or intangible? And you will sit with it, and he will show you. You let him show you. Him is you. Yes. We can call our source place. But I say this because there is something in us that is running. You can call it the mind, sometimes you may call it yourself. It is running. When it comes to moments like this, you know, the, 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 we can say almost it feels like the, the key has turned, the handle, the lock is turning to open, something wants to run. Tomorrow. But you come to see. You have to come to see the absolute fallacy of that. And that it's just a, just a little trick in the mind. It's nothing. You're already inside, no? Rumi said, no. Also, and knocking at the door, it opened. Knocking what saying, let me in, let me in. The door opens, and you realize that you're already inside. Meaning, you as truth is inside. You as the ego is not inside. You know. Actually, nothing is outside, mm-hmm. but there is an outside of the inside, <laughs> and there is the inside of the inside. If you understand this kind of language, yeah. you're going a little bit Sufi now, but uh, <laughs> slow down a bit. You know. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.